In this video, we're going to talk about the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So if g of x is equal to the definite integral of f of t from a to x, then g prime of x is going to equal f of x. So if g is the antiderivative of f, then the derivative of g will equal f. The derivative of the antiderivative will give you the original function. Another way in which you can express the second part of the, I mean the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, is you can express it this way. The derivative of the integral from a to x of f of t dt is going to equal f of x. And for the most part, you're replacing t with x. But that's not always the case, as some examples will illustrate. But that's the basic idea behind the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Some textbooks may call it the second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, but regardless of what they call it, the principle still remains the same. Now let's work on an example problem. So let's find the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 0 to x of the function the square root of t squared plus 4 dt. Now, it's going to be difficult to integrate this function and then differentiate it. So there has to be an easier way. Perhaps you realize that the answer is going to be f of x, which is just the square root of x squared plus 4. But there's a process that you can employ to get the answer, and we're going to go over that right now. So f of t is going to be the function square root t squared plus 4. So what we now have is just the integration of f of t dt from 0 to x. Now, capital F is the antiderivative of lowercase f. So let's find the antiderivative. It's going to be capital F of t evaluated from 0 to x. And that's equal to f of x minus f of 0. Now, the derivative of f of x, that is capital F of x, is going to give us lowercase f of x. And f of 0 is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. So this is equal to f of x. Now, if f of t is equal to the square root of t squared plus 4, then f of x is going to be the square root of x squared plus 4. And so this is the final answer to the entire problem. Now let's try another problem. So let's say it's going to be the antiderivative or the integral of let's say the square root of t to the third plus 5 from x to 4. Go ahead and try that. Feel free to pause the video. So let's define f of t as being the square root of t to the third plus 5. And so we have this expression. We can replace this with f of t. The antiderivative of lowercase f, we know it's capital F. Evaluated from x to 4. So then this is going to be f of 4 minus f of x. Now f of 4 is a constant, and so its derivative will be 0. Now the derivative of capital F is going to be lowercase f. So notice that the answer is not just f of x anymore. It's negative f of x if x is in the bottom. If x was on top, then it would become f of x. So the final answer is going to be negative square root x cubed plus 5. And so the answer can change. So it's not always just f of x. But if you go through this process, you can always get the right answer. Here's another example. 
So instead of x, let's say it's x squared. We're going to have the cube root. Actually, let's use the square root of t to the third minus 4 dt. So go ahead and try it. What do you think the answer is going to be if you had to guess it? Well, here's what you need to do if you want to do it the fast way. The first thing you need to do is replace t with what you see here, in this case, x squared. So it's going to be x squared raised to the third power minus 4. And then you got to multiply by the derivative of x squared based on the chain rule. If it was just x, the derivative of x is 1, so it wasn't important then, but now it is. So the final answer is going to be 2x times the square root of x to the 6 minus 4. Now let's confirm it, so I'm just going to write this answer at the bottom. So let's go through that process that we've been going through. So first, let's define f of t. So f of t is going to be the square root of t to the third minus 4. And so we have this expression, f of t dt. And the antiderivative of lowercase f, as always, that's not going to change. It's going to be capital F evaluated from 5 to x squared. And so this is going to be f of x squared, that's a terrible looking 2, minus f of 5. So what is the derivative of f of x squared? Well, we need to use the chain rule. So we need to differentiate the outside part of the function. The derivative of capital F is lowercase f. Then we need to keep the stuff on the inside the same. And then we need to find the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x. Now, this is a constant, and the derivative of any constant will be 0. So now, f of t is equal to this. So what is f of x squared? We need to replace t with x squared. So it's going to be x squared raised to the third power minus 4. So then that becomes the square root of x to the 6 minus 4, and then times 2x. So as you can see, these two are the same. Let's try one more example. And I recommend pausing the video and working on it. If you can get this one right, then you're OK with this topic. So we're going to integrate the function from x squared to x cubed. And let's say it's the square root of t to the fourth power minus 2. So go ahead and try it. So let's do it the easy way first. We're going to plug in the top part of the integral, the upper limit. So it's going to be the square root of replace t with x cubed, so x cubed raised to the fourth power minus 2 and then multiply by the derivative of x cubed, so that's going to be 3x squared. And then for the bottom, don't forget to subtract. And let's replace t with x squared. So it's going to be x squared raised to the fourth power minus 2, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. So the final answer, which I'm going to write here, is going to be 3x squared square root x to the 12 minus 2 and then minus 2x square root x to the 8th minus 2. And so that's the fast way of getting the answer, but let's show our work. So once again, we're going to define f of t as being the square root of t to the 4th minus 2. So now we have f of t dt, and the antiderivative of lowercase f is capital F, evaluated from x squared to x cubed. And then this is going to be f of x cubed 
minus f of x squared. And the derivative of the outside function, capital F, is lowercase f. Keep the inside the same, and then differentiate the inside function, which is 3x squared. And then it's going to be minus f of x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So now, using this function, let's plug in x cubed. So it's going to be the square root of x to the third raised to the fourth minus 2. And we can move this to the front. And then it's going to be minus 2x square root x squared raised to the fourth minus 2. So you can see we're going to get the same final answer. And so that's how you can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 if your textbook defines it as part one.